Facing head-on the emotions beneath the surface, as we bridge from an old world of confusion and lack to a beautiful new world of freedom, abundance, and love with straightforward truth and inspired hope is what you'll find on The Charla Anderson Show, collector and connector of fascinating people, and everyone is fascinating. Here's your host, Charla Anderson. Good, beautiful day, you beautiful, beautiful souls. This is Charla Anderson, host of The Charla Anderson Show, collector and connector of fascinating people, and everyone is fascinating especially yes. you. I'm so grateful to have you here with us today. This is uh, my weekly live show. We're on winwinwomen.tv and, and the Win Win Women Networks, along with that uh, podcast, uh, Podetize, these these folks that I love to, to associate with. And I love having a guest. We're going to have, if you come on as a live guest, you know, we're going to talk a little bit with my guest today. But if you come on as a visitor, after about half an hour, you're going to be able to open up and ask questions if you'd like to do that. Uh, that's one of the, this is the world's only interactive platform mm-hmm. for Win uh, Win Women. So uh, on Women Women. So we're excited about that. My guest today is uh, Renee Leonard Kennedy, and we're going to introduce her in just a second. But before that, we're going to do my little uh, breathing exercise. We're going to take a little 22 Second, mini vacation and learn to get centered and just be, you know, there's so much going on out in our world and so much tech. Maybe we can take 22 seconds every so often and just relax and get centered. So here we go. And we're going to breathe in calm for seven seconds. We're going to hold four seconds and breathe out gratitude for 11 seconds. So I truly wish that uh, you'll join me with this. So here we go, breathe in our calm. Hold. Release. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you only say one prayer, thank you is enough. Be in gratitude. So thank you for joining us uh, today live or later on. We're going to um, just have one of the the best conversations. I met Renee in uh, just a month, a couple months ago, I guess. It, yeah. We were at a, a podcasting con- conference and yeah. oh my goodness, we ended up sitting at the same table and just really began... <laughs> like joined at the yeah. hip we had so much and so fun and we're having and uh she has a book she wrote a book that um everyone needs to read i i i got it for my sister's um she was uh, for my sister's gathering of the girls last week i think everyone needs to read this book it's called after the flowers die and we'll talk a lot more about that so i just wanted to tell you a little bit where we connected and how, why I've got her on here. And she was so gracious to come on as a last minute, kind of a substitution. Cause I'm, you know, I'm pretty much booked this year all the way to the end of the year. I'm excited to about that and had opportunity to get her in, squeeze her in this week. So, so grateful. Um, You know, Renee, I'm going to, instead of me reading all the stuff about you, I'm going to kind of just ask you to tell us a little bit about, tell us who you are in this world and then a little bit about what you do. And we'll talk a lot about this. This is just a fun conversation. We feel like I'm I'm connecting with my new best friend, (laughs) right? So welcome, 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 Renee. Thank you for joining me. Well, thank you so much, Charla. And I, I fondly call you Till. Because you're always willing till. So whenever I thank you, I just say, hey, that was till. That was till. Uh, my name is Renee Leonard Kennedy, and I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I uh, have a great love for this country. But, you know, before that comes my family, my friends, and everybody I meet along the way. And uh, Till and I, Charla and I have, um, we like to meet people and it is a a fascinating world out there. So I love doing that. I love being outdoors. That's why I'm rather hoarse right now. We had a late summer uh, burst 
in North Carolina. So it was 82 degrees. And I was sitting out, and I know that doesn't mean to anything to the Texans, but to me, it was like, yes, 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 yes. So I've been sitting outside for two days straight virtually, and uh, the pollen got the better of me, but it was worth it. It was worth it. Um, so, but I'm in, I write, uh, I podcast. I love being with people. Um, I love being, I adore being outdoors. And these are the things I like to do. And I also love ballroom dancing. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you live on a farm, right? And you have an orchard right. and, and things like that. They, so you are an out, outdoor girl. And um, what, what the reason, and we'll go back to the teal thing. So the, mm. the reason how we met, actually, you, yeah. I was staying at a different hotel than this conference, but you and, and uh, your podcast co-host name. Anna Grace Smith. Anna, Anna Grace. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're sitting outside having breakfast and I would be walking by and mm-hmm. I guess it was all three days or whatever, you know, I was like, Hey, and I had my teal cowboy boots on. And so I yes, started calling me teal and all, we've just started chatting and having, you know, really um, a strong connection. We and did. So I love that. And I think it's funny, you, call, you know, I, 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 my joke is teal is my favorite color because I can't spell turquoise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you look really smoking hot in it too. And oh, thank you. Yeah, I, so I still need to buy those book, uh, boots you recommended. That was really, they were really beautiful boots. But yeah. I did, I did develop a bit of a, I won't say it as addiction, but after I had Texas barbecue ribs, I have been going after ribs in North Carolina. I don't know what it was, but I, that's what I order. <laughs> and I don't regret it one bit. I'm having a great time <laughs> eating the well, ribs. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. I, you know, it would not much yeah. better than Texas yeah. ribs. I hope you yeah. can find something, something to, to yes. help you there. You all do. You all do amazing things in Texas. So. Mm, uh, yeah. Just ask us, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs> we love our state. Right. So thank you for um, really joining me. But what I want to, the main thing I want to get out about you is this incredibly, beautifully done, amazingly beautiful book. It's called After the Flowers Die. And, you know, pretty much a hundred percent chance that we'll have to deal with somebody, a loss of some sort. Right. Yes, so right. this is, I guess it's one of the more, um, I mean, I read the back, I read several little pieces mm-hmm. of it. I always, I always read, I start from the back and read, you know, the back of the book. And then I read mm-hmm. the acknowledgements. I, you know, I read all the stuff, maybe the first chapter and maybe, um, a random chapter in the middle. And I was right. just, I lo- I'm i so truly amazed at your, your gift, your gift no. of, of putting the words together of prose of, of making it come so incredibly well mm. done with humor. This is a tough subject. And what I love, you also have a podcast and we talk, you talk, you, you and Anna, you guys talk about tough things, right? right? You talk about the things that nobody else is going to talk about and death, death is one of them and preparing and the aftermath and what do we do after loss and, and the way this book is read. And so I gave uh, my three sisters and my brother-in-law this book and, uh, for when we were at our last 32nd annual gathering of the girls last yeah. week. And, uh, uh, you know, my, my brother-in-law picked it up and was reading it and just it's, it's easy, easy readable. And yeah. it's got so many profound thoughts and nuggets and, mm-hmm. and well, it's just done differently than anything I've ever read. And I'm so yeah. amazed and, I, well, know, I thank anyway. you for that. <laughs> Just no, I, I do thank you. I um, It was spurred on by the loss of my parents, and people would hand me their, uh, they would hand me books on grief, and they were very thick. 
um, and I would open them up. And, you know, after you lost somebody, the idea of, you know, tackling a, a three inch tome or even, I mean, it is hard to even read a scripture. It's hard to read a devotional, but I realized I needed something simpler. And I thought maybe I'm not the only one. And so that's the outcome of this book is these are the things that I wish somebody had told me along the way. Um, and they're obvious and other people write about them, but I, I purposely did it in a small format because nobody can, you know, after loss, your attention span is out the door. You know, you, you, you just can't focus. So I intentionally made them short and with uh, points at the end. And I, I use story uh, because that's what we all know. So that's where, that's the roots of where this came from. And I also, you know, it is, you know, life is a juxtaposition. We find, you know, there, there is evil and there's good. And we're so grateful that good wins. Um, but, you know, even with death, there is, there's death, but there's also laughter. Because, you know, our, our lives are filled with memories of, you know, two generations. If we're, you know, God willing, we have a third generation to remember. Um, so, I mean, we have all these different stories. And then, you all, you know, you remember the humorous. You remember those. You remember the hard times. Um, I also wrote it, too, because in our world, death tends to be very anesthetized. Um, you know, you know, it's and it's also very we, we have it down to a let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it kind of thing and get this done. Hey, and what used to take three days when I was young takes an hour 40 now, you know, if you can skip the viewing or the the meet and greet at church and just go straight in. Um, and then I think about my great grandmothers, you know. I would go into their homes knowing that my great grandmother had been laid out on a table, you know, or something like that, and or it put in the parlor. And so we forget, we forgot, I think, along the way, we've made death this almost. I was joking with somebody, I was wondering when they were going to have drive through de death, you know, uh, funerals, which they probably already have, uh, because we want it, we want everything, you know, in stuff or a microwave and, you know, let's grieve, let's get it over with, you know, this person loved him. I have great memories, but I, I'm over that now. Yeah. Um, and I don't think life works that way. I think we need to carry these stories of our, our generations that were before us. Um, and so that we can pass them on to those afterwards. Well, They're important. The, yes. Yeah. And the way, the yeah. way that uh, the stories are written, uh, you, you're, they're not evident that there's mm. a lesson in them until there is a lesson mm. in them. And they're mm. just uh, compelling stories about, so, uh, you know, I said, I just sat there. I didn't have time. I mean, it's like mm. two in the morning by now. I'm like, okay. Oh my gosh. I just kept reading more yeah. um, of the little chapters. And then just so you know, I also went to, you know, your website and your blog mm. and there's, uh, the downside up life, this, yeah. you know, that's, I, I'd love to hear, hear, understand a little bit more what the downside up life is, but I read your yeah. blogs and I read, um, oh gosh, it was so, uh, I, I kept looking for a different one and another one and I can't, you know, it just ended up delving in. Yeah. And so it's not, they're, they're heavy, they're not heavy, they're but they're yeah. deep, right? You, yeah. And and oh my gosh, tell me, um, why did you decide to write all this? Just because you went through it, you've already said all that, actually. So, but yeah. your mom, well, but I passing, think, right? Well, I think I mean with the blogs, uh, and along with this book, I, you know, we can't help people unless we're honest, and that's why you and I connected. You and I were honest, and. I, I think we knew it from the minute we met each other. You know, I was like anybody who wears wears till cowboy boots. She's my woman, and we're we're going to get along fine. Uh, but I, I think a lot of times we want everybody to see us as an Instagram post that we have it all together. I don't know about you. Um, there's a I, I am blessed, and I praise God for so many things. The gratitude is so important. 
but the, you know, there's a lot in my life that is a mess. Uh, you know, my brother-in-law has serious, serious cancer. Uh, my children's father has Parkinson's in his late stage. I have a relative, a loved one with mental illness that just, it's just an Alice hole that we're diving into. Um, and I, I mean, I'm hoping we see the bottom and I have no idea. There's no guarantees, but I think we need to be honest with one another. Um, and, and I think that's why I write is to be honest because I know other people need to read it because they're living it or to share it or to understand it. I mean, you, I mean, you are the same way you write the same things, you know, you write encouragement and, uh, so, I mean, but you write that from a spirit of having lived a lot of many stories. Yeah. So our lives being a mess. Yes. And yes. you, you really came from a really dark place. You were an alcoholic, you know, yes, I was. and I re I read the blog about how to, yeah. you know, your last binge or whatever it was. Yeah. My and last and great just, drunk. <laughs> my last, and that, <laughs> that blog is amazing because, yeah. you know, you were, you were real and you're mm -hmm. like, is this, is this, this is my life, right? And we yes. make the decisions, but we forget that we make those decisions, that we have that yeah. choice and capacity to make those decisions. And we should right. make them, uh, I don't like using the word should, but making them from mm. a place from the heart and what's where we are mm. connection, you know, and we, you know, <laughs> you mentioned it already, but we, are, I know the end of the story. God wins, right? He's already won. Yeah, so right. all this good and evil fight we're going through in our world mm -hmm. right now. I'm not, I'm outrageously optimistic, but that's not going mm -hmm. to be the way it ends. Right. However, we're dealing th with all these unsteady times. And, right. and when you made a decision, wasn't it Y2K? Mm -hmm. Well, that was my last great drunk. I had, I didn't stop them, but that was the last time I was really, really hung over. Um, and it was Y2K and I had prepped. Um, and for some reason we had some neighbors over and I just knew I was going to get snogger because it was Y2K. And I was like, is the world going to be here tomorrow? Um, and you had and kids, I, you had young kids. And I had kids and, and I, I tell them myself because I, I always, have been one of those uh, functioning alcoholics. I was a functioning alcoholic and I was always very careful around my children. I would wait till they were asleep and I would decide if I'm, you know, am I getting drunk tonight or not? I wouldn't make sure I would buy, I was very controlled. I would buy two beers if I just wanted a little buzz or if I really wanted something, I made sure I had plenty. And that was after they went to sleep. But this night, you know, I'm ashamed to say, my children saw me at their worst. Um, and I sobered up around three o'clock and wondered why my neighbors hadn't left yet. Um, and I was like, AM, right? 3 AM. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I was even soberer before that, but I just forgot to look at the clock. Um, cause after a while you can drink yourself sober, you know, or you can just say, this is enough. Um, so I, I looked in, I went, why are the kids still up? This is not, this is not me. You know, the heart of me is my kids. I love my kids dearly. So I go home. I literally, I'm waiting for my neighbors to leave, end up taking their children home, which they were just right next door, putting them to bed, put my children to bed and tell them, I think we need to go to sleep. Um, it was, it was one of these obnoxiously head mind, body, spirit, wake up that says, you need to start praying because this is not good. This is not right. Is this how you want to live your life in front of your kids? Is this what you want to do to your heart, soul, and mind? Um, and it was just a very, very good wake up. Uh, and it took me two years after that, but I kept praying to the Lord. I just said, Lord, I don't want this. And one day I woke up and he was like, I, I just heard you know, however, that small, still small voice. It was like, you're done. You don't have to do this anymore. And I was like, yes. And I was free. I was just done. Um, but then I write, and after the flowers die, I wrote about the temptation after some bad news with a loved one. Um, 
how I, I was staying in the hotel and there was that bottle. Man, that bottle was right there for me to purchase for ten dollars. And I set that bottle outside, but uh, you know, temptation comes along. You know, but we we learn the tools to fight it, and we 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 become warrior princesses along the way. You know, so. you said I am a recovering alcoholic um, in the Alcoholics Anonymous. And I just want to discuss, I just want to put this mm-hmm. out there with someone who has been there, done that. Mm-hmm. And I know a couple of people that literally have not missed a AA meeting in mm-hmm. sometimes 30 years. I know somebody uh, mm-hmm. 40 years. And because I know that every word you say after the words I am is who you are. Mm-hmm. I would love that one piece. Mm-hmm. I think they've done amazing stuff. And maybe mm-hmm. maybe some people change one addiction to another, but it's a mm-hmm. better addiction, mm-hmm. I would guess. I'm eating rather than a bottle. But what is mm-hmm. your take on that? Because if you say I am an alcoholic, then I, no, I, I totally I believe was. you can be free of no, that. I said I was, and I'm sorry if I said I am, um, recovering alcoholic. No, you I, did say I was. I, I noticed a difference, yeah. but I wanted to I, discuss that with you. Yeah, I, I really feel like the Lord took that away from me. I think that's what he does. He's not He's not here to fool around. He's not going to say, here, here's your little pet sin. But let's let's just hang on to it. And and that would be I am. And we know he is the great I am. So I I was an alcoholic. Now, can I pick up that that bottle anytime? Yes, I can. But that's why I lean on the Lord God Almighty. Um, So, I mean, but that's. That's their vernacular. Um, I, I, I. I mean, it was really, really good. It was very, very good for me, but I needed something differently. uh, So I went to celebrate recovery. Um, And where I do feel we all could use a little celebrating of recovery for there's, you know, the struggle of worry is real in me. You know, the struggle and anxiety. Um, I I can pick these up and put those in the place. The struggle um, to elevate my children into the God spot of my life is so easy. And I have to have to say no, no to that. Uh, and sometimes I, I live in that idolatry for a little bit. And so I decide to unpack my anxiety and my worry and, and say, Oh Lord, they're your kids. They're your kids. Uh, and so that's, I, I do think it's a wise thing, but I think there's some things that we continue to battle. Well, I, mean, totally, I don't know about, but, but when, yeah. but, I just feel like I think that they do have done so much, but I would love that we can say, you know, I am yeah. a child of, you know, most high God or whatever. Yeah. And when, when, you know, we're talking about love and God, we're not talking about religion here, which is kind of yeah. a totally different thing, right. you know, God in a box. So uh, um, we love, we love God and when we want yeah. relationship, not yes. rules and regulations. And that's yes. the difference, I think. So yeah. your um uh experience and you were also an atheist, did it? Didn't oh, you? I definitely was, yes. I I mean really that you go whew, there's a couple of I know switches, there's big a, deals. I uh, <laughs> I lived with that for a very long time, but I was sixteen years I loved the Lord as a child. I remember, and I got my little white confirmation Bible from Reynolds Memorial United Methodist Church, and I was so excited. I still have it, you know, with my little script handwriting, which I I don't write with anymore. Um, But I was 16. I was was tired of maybe rules and regulations, but maybe not. I think it was more I really wanted, I thought— rebellion um it was going to be life bringing and being different was going to do something for me even though i'd already i was popular i was in plays i was on the ten, tennis team i did well in school i, I had what I, I needed you know to whatever but i guess my ego just said no no i'm not i don't have everything i want because i still have a god that i kind of follow and I went, nope. And I shut my Bible. I said, and I remember specifically saying, Lord, 
I am not going to follow you any, anymore and I'm not going to believe in you anymore. And I shut it at 16. Um, and I didn't, didn't think about him again until my son was born, but I still was an atheist and I didn't come back to him until I was 39. But lots of years of rebellion and going my way, lots, you know, as they say in AA, a lot more adding to my story. Uh, and it was, it was ugly. I mean, I was, I was very productive, but when I wanted to go out and do what I wanted to go do, I did. And I, you know, you, you do, you know, Romans talks about how you, you do it and you become numb to sin. I was, I don't know if I was necessarily numb to sin, but it's easy to tamp it down. It's easy to tamp it down. Um, and more than that, I, I realized the the biggest, the biggest and deepest thing that I realized was 2 a.m. I was alone. I, I would wake up in a cold sweat and just go, I'm so alone. Um, and I couldn't see past the idea that one day I was going to be in a grave um, and that would be the end of me. And, and I mean, nothing, nothing would save it. I mean, to me, if you're an atheist, you almost need something. And that's where alcohol filled in that hole. But it would you eventually wake up at 2 a.m., you know? Looking for love in all the wrong places. And yes. That, so, yeah. that song, that old song has, you know, it really has some good uh, credibility to it. it I mean, it's like the truth, a deep truth, because there's a heart-shaped hole in every, yes. every heart. And... Um, or a God-shaped hole in every heart. And so when mm -hmm. we are looking out there for something else, it's challenging to mm -hmm. remember who we are and who right. we are is perfect. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly who and where we are. Nobody's, right. nobody's perfect here, but we are loved exactly. I mean, if God is love, right. he can't be not loved. And if we are right. loved and when we can release the, the 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 drama release all the mm. stuff that are the the voice in our head and yes and yes. listen to the still quiet voice mm. we will yes. learn and know we can yeah we can learn and be just be yeah. be that we're okay we're okay yeah. and we're not you know i mean if you're in the gutter or if you're in a palace you know god loves you the mm. same i mean he loves right. there's no there's no not love. And I think that another thing religion kind of has done is taught us that there's this big, mean, you mm -hmm. know, God, but he, he, he loves, he just loves. You know, it's astounding to me to, to listen and think about the Lord God Almighty loving us. So, um, because, you know, the only replication we have in that is telling people, you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. Um, and sometimes they don't, you know, you know, they, they're not getting it. And I, you know, I think about that often. I think, Lord, you know, I don't think I'm letting you love me the way that I know that you, you could, I'm blocking it. Um, so maybe you have an answer to that because I find that just. Well, the people, it's, it's the a, harder wow. people are to love, the more they need it. This is mm -hmm. a truth. And from us, you know, but the, the even bullies are, are uh, victims, right? So mm -hmm. I tell my kids or, you know, mm -hmm. people, I was like, if people sometimes just don't love themselves enough okay. to let them receive love. So I believe it's a self-love thing that they just don't love themselves enough. And they're, they're, they're trying to find the fight the 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 demons within without bringing mm -hmm. in the light and love that is their right actually they're they, you know they're it's their birthright uh, i never thought about that yeah yeah i i do think there's times that we i i mean i get overwhelmed by the world and i have to stop um and ultimately think in the end it, god loves me you know, I, but that's astounding. I was even to a loved one that was, is 
in a psychiatric center. I was shouting on the phone because it was so noisy where she was. I was like, God loves you. God loves you. Like I was trying to embed it into her DNA um, somehow because, I mean, it is great that I love her, but I wanted her to know that because there's so much peace in it. And and again, yeah. so many people don't, they don't hear it. They don't. Yeah. And, and if there's noise everywhere, it, and, and I, I would think in her situation or in yeah. their situation, it would be a very hard way to heal if you can't be still and know yeah. and be quiet yeah. and have some time and those like you were talking about too in the mornings a lot of times you're laying mm. there alone and now I, I believe that that's often a time that people mm. come to hear the still small voice right. is there's you know the the love god's love trying to yeah. um, just let them feel that and there's you know there's nothing you can do that is unforgivable right there's nothing right, right. done that is not yeah. forgivable i mean there's no Nothing. <laughs> I mean, Nothing. if you reach out and receive, you you're uh, called. And I mean, honestly, this sounds like a a, a sermon almost, but I feel like uh, for some reason this is our message today. So somebody has to hear it, right? And if you, I need to hear it. <laughs> I need to hear it every day. And I I think it's so so important. You did say something that was really interesting. You said receive it. And I think that's like you were saying, we have so many boundaries up. You know, you know, there's something about receiving that is so very hard. It's so maybe a giver can't re- give if a receiver won't receive. That's another little mm. quote I like. I mean, but it, oh, know, that is it, good. Yeah. You know, if if uh, you don't love yourself enough to be able to receive the gifts of love or you know, a candy bar or whatever it is. I used to, you know, some people don't love themselves enough to think that they, you know, um, can receive. And so we've got yeah. to understand that the receiving piece is our, our responsibility to just right. be in, find that little, a little speck in there that can start receiving okay. the grace, the mercy, the forgiveness, the, the, the peace that passes understanding. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And you know, I just walk in that as beautiful. I mean, it just, it's beautiful. But but I think it's really hard for people. It's either really hard or really easy, but some people, the idea of, you know, Jesus being a free gift, you know, I mean, we all get free gifts and we're thinking, okay, they're little cheap things, let's throw them away, you know, and they're not realizing that. But the idea that this is not a work, this is not something that you can do enough of to ever balance the scales, that you just receive the free gift of God. Um, it's, it was the most delightful and wonderful thing to happen to me in my Christian walk when I finally understood it. Um, you know, it, it just, it changed everything. I was like, there's nothing there's nothing he wants from me other than to receive his love. And I mean, of course, he wants, I want to glorify him and magnify him and follow his ways because of that. But it's, there's no forcing, there's, you know, no manufacturing. I'm on my part of feelings and emotions and emojis and, and whatnot. It, it, it's, it's, unfathomable it's it's so beautiful i i don't have words for it I, here we are we're having worship who knew it <laughs> well this is um just you know it's so needed mm-hmm. you're you're the conversation and and um by the way your your book uh the after the flowers die is not mm-hmm. preachy it is true mm-hmm. good down to earth love and logic and mm. practical practical yes. in many ways right yes so yes. that's that's a, a huge thing as well and yeah that's what i learned along the way learned along the way you know i mean there you know it it talks about everything from 
taking a friend with you. This is the one thing I, I think most people don't think about right now, particularly our age. Um, that little rectangle that we all love, our computers are filled with things on them. Um, and we, you know, we may think of cleaning out an attic box of things that we don't want our children to find, but we don't think about our files and our photographs and our messenger and all these other things, you know, or even our social media, um, the things that our children are discovering about us now, but will discover about us later. We need to be really careful because that is our legacy because they see us, you know, we want to be honest and true and real. Um, and we don't want them to go on into our our media, I mean, our digital world, too, and, and go, okay, mom or dad, you know, they weren't really cracked up to what they say they are, you know, that kind of thing. I think we really need to uh, be care, you know, careful of what we leave our children. And, and that's an inheritance right there. A moral code is the biggest inheritance I believe we leave our children. I don't know what you think. Values, values, values. Yeah. And I feel like yeah. our our community, our society has gotten mm. our values a little upside down. I don't, you know, yes. there was a time when we were growing up, I believe that, you know, you you did first things first. You you yeah. didn't, you know, go frivolous things until your bills mm. were paid. And so there's and right. I I also think um witnessing uh, their inner the value that uh, is most important to you is what you spend your money on what you spend right. your time on check right. it used to be checkbooks and calendars and i mentioned mm-hmm. this quite a bit but you know they don't even know if have checkbooks anymore <laughs> but yeah what yeah. are you know what are you spending your money and your time right. on and your um it, it becomes your highest value if you right. watch it and you might say something else is your highest value but that's a really good test yeah. to figure it out if you yeah and they're watching they're watching they know they know when you pick up the phone and, you know we've all gone to restaurants uh, as a family or or seen people and they're all sitting around communicating to their best friend on <laughs> whatever you know it, well and, honestly and my we've, yeah, they think they do that, but they yeah. also sometimes we're just you're in conversation and they're just I think they're scrolling or whatever, but right. they're playing a game. They're they're literally yeah. just, you know, being busy, being busy. Right. And uh, um it's hard to find the time to be still and know if you're gonna be uh, yeah. in, engaged with what am I gonna I've gotta have something going on all the time. You right. know, I don't I I, <laughs> I know I'm different, but I will spend I'll drive for four or eight hours without and pure silence. I don't have anything going on in my car typically when I'm driving unless mm-hmm. I'm make a call or something. So yeah. uh, I don't even really have music on that often, but yeah. uh, I, I learned a long time ago that, you know, that if that box, that, that thing on the wall, that pro that propaganda machine is on yes, the programming really. is on the, if it is on, then I, I can't quite, um, I can't rest. I can't close my eyes. I can't, you yeah. know, so yeah. it, it's, it's there. It's intent. It's called programming for a reason. Right. And, uh, <laughs> I think we all in, would suggest that you and I would suggest yeah. that we just kind of minimize that because it's programming. It is what yeah. they, somebody else wants you to know, not, not guiding you to your, right. your creator and your source. Uh, I agree with you so much. And I mean, we just, we have to fight fight it. And I think sometimes the younger generation is surprising because there'll be times that I am doing business like there and I, I'm like, okay, wait, I've got to take this call. And they'll go, Mom, mom, mom. And I'm like, okay, I love it that they're calling me out on it. So no, I agree with you because we're hearing so many, you know, all of a sudden you become opinionated or you become a talking point. And we don't need to be that way. We've lost the art at times of conversation. And and I think in that we're robbed of joy. And, and we don't want that. I mean, we want to, that is a beautiful reflection of our Lord and being joyful. 
I, I love the idea that you're on the road for eight hours. Now, see, I, I could not do that. I would have to have some music um, or, yeah, something to kind of keep me. And But there are times. There are times I, I, I go through long periods of just cutting it off like I've had enough. And that is nice because we know, be still and know that he is God. He can't cut. He can't cut through all the noise. Yeah. Yeah. So that voice never that shuts is, up. And when we can literally yeah. just breathe in, like we did earlier, just breathe in, get centered and grounded and go, yeah. you know what? Everything, every single thing, everything and every bit of a knowledge or, you know, has been is embedded in our because we're all connected. So we, yeah. every bit of the knowledge yeah. is in our souls, yeah. our spirits, our yeah. hearts. Why don't we uh, take time to yeah. be still? Every answer you have is right inside mm-hmm. the stillness. Right. Every answer you need is right inside the stillness. Oh, that's profound. So profound. I've never said that before like that. I yeah. hope I never need to write that down. Well, you need to write that down because, <laughs> you know, the first, we've all gotten the habit. You know, we, you and I used to have to go to the encyclopedia or the Webster's Dictionary. Um, and now, what do we say? Hey, Siri. You know, I hope my computer doesn't respond. But, uh, you know, no, I love that. I love it that we, we do because the, we have the Holy Spirit and he who is in us is greater than he is in the world. Um, so we just keep doing that. I I think it, we count it as all joy. Yeah. And everything is always working out for me. I, th- I think I sent that in a text. You know what I mean? I, yeah. What if you walked in that? Um, that's what I thank you is my main mantra. Mon- thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm always I wake up in three in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And otherwise recent, more recently, I've really taken on everything is always working out for me because wherever I am is all I have, right? I don't have mm-hmm. net last second, next second. I have this one. Mm-hmm. And so where I, it gives me the the grounding, the centeredness to go, okay, it's working out because this is where I am and I get to, you know, take care of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been, it's so miraculous when things like that, uh, you know, then I'm like, it works, you know, <laughs> it's just, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not just not breathing. It's not yeah. just talking about yeah. it. So let's, we're, we're winding, going to wind down, but your um, favorite quote was by Winston Churchill oh, yeah. is um, um, never, never, never give up. I have that right. on a plaque downstairs, but I also have right. this one by Ronald Reagan. I believe uh, That is very it can, nice. It can be done. And if it right. can be done when we have, you know, there, there's so many aspects that we're um, hard to include in one conversation but uh you know you are a coach you have a we haven't even talked about your podcast oh my gosh yeah. you've got i met uh your your beautiful cohort anna and she mm-hmm. was uh she's young yeah she's a multi we're a multi-gen multi-gen yeah. and it's called yeah. moral tea and i moral also called tea it podcast podcast yeah. and i was i was calling it morality morality yeah. <laughs> you can well, say that's it where it way, came, right Mor- that's where it came from yeah and y'all have yeah. just a but this is a podcast moral t m o r a l t e a podcast yeah. that you do hold this discussion these deep mm-hmm. deep conversations about yeah. how to how to have hard hard conversations was one of them and and i i'm like these these this whole uh, you guys are amazing out there and I've just oh, had so you. much fun with both of you and mm. I'm grateful uh, that you were able to take the time today and know how busy you are and that you have shared your message, shared your word and um, been so incredibly generous with uh, your time and your, you know, how do people find you? You know, how do people find you and, um, uh, what is it that you want people to know the last, what's your last word here, you know, that you would really like people to take action on or. So. I am I in the book of after the flowers die, which is available on Amazon and in game press um, is to let them know that they are not alone. They are never alone. 
Um, I think that's really important. Um, you know, if, and I wrote it for a general market because I remember being that general market who felt she was alone. So I, I you know, whether uh, you believe in uh, the Lord God Almighty or you can get a community of people, um, you're not alone. And that's uh, interesting that's, that's to say true. that because you it it isn't preachy. It isn't it's it's real. Yeah. It's got yeah. real language. It's got the whole real thing. Yeah. In your, it's not for mm. it, it because some there there's a lot of people that would not accept a a, yeah. a Christian book, so to speak, on um, on anything if in this yeah. world because uh, well we I think we need to get out of that and that's why moral tea came about is we just feel like. The church needs to talk about the hard topics because it's happening in the church. Um, the Lord Jesus Christ never, never shied from a hard topic. And and we feel like it needs to be spoken about. So that's what we do. Um, so, uh, you know, the one thing I would do, I would say is, you know, start talking about the hard topics. Um, be real with people. Be honest. It opens a door. Um, and you know, you and I, we just started talking and we were just both open. Um, and I know about your life, you know, about my life and I just feel very comfortable and it, it does something and we're connected that way. And it creates that you're not aloneness and we're hoping moral tea podcast does that for other people in other ways. So we, we do tackle a lot of different, and you know, a lot of times you don't want to talk about, you know, sex trafficking. And you don't want to hear about that. But the fact is, it's going on all around us. America, you know, you look on any of your major highways, this is happening. So uh, we are, our big. And in big our day, churches. And, and in, in our, our churches. Schools. Yes, totally. Every, 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 it is all there. So we do have a uh, exciting tidbit here, but November 6th is our first day on the pray.com app. So we're very, very excited about that. So yeah, very excited. we're excited. Uh, and you can also reach me at ReneeLeonardKennedy.com. And that's two R. Yeah. So because it will be on podcast, I'm going to spell it R E N E E Leonard, L E O N A R D Kennedy, right. K E N N E D Y, as right. you know, dot com. And that's your Thank website. Thank you so much. And I feel like yeah. that is very, uh, you know, it's beautifully done and um, your Thank blogs you. were on there that I I just got engrossed with. And, you yeah. know, it's not something I do a lot where I, I go in and I'm just, I don't read a lot of blogs, but I, yeah. I'm i trying to write them now and get them out. So oh, good you know, for you. Yes. Yeah, I've got, yeah. I've been working on that. So uh, yeah. just getting things pulled together, but um, it's been an incredibly beautiful time with you, Renee. I love you so much. And I know I love you. We nobody nobody is an island here. I mean, we've got mm. so much stuff going around us in our world and our lives right. for us to take this 45 minutes of you know, or to an hour um once a week for me and and whatever mm. you guys are doing just to, you know life is chaotic out there and, and just take some yes. time just to, to center and love yourself enough to mm. listen, be still and know I that, I guess yeah. that's it. So. Oh, I love thank that. You. Thank you. I received that. <laughs> and I love the breathing exercises. I do them before I go to bed. So thank you. Oh, yeah. great. And, and, you know, and, and, um, you know, there's, um, I was telling, uh, Sometimes just holding a rock is grounding, you know, mm -hmm. just holding a stone yeah, or a crystal or to walking barefooted, you know, just mm -hmm. because we're, we're so um, electronic <laughs> and yes. electrified and, you know, just yeah. walking barefoot and, and, and getting off of the, um, you know, just, just touching the trees, just touching leaves, yeah. walking, breathing deeply and breathing the mm. fresh air and being in the sunshine. There's, you know, yes. We've got it's it's critical. So you were outside the last couple of days. That's so good. Yeah. I'm going to come see you in North Carolina. Okay. You need to come. You come anytime. <laughs> we will have a we'll have a till weekend. It'll be wonderful. I don't think I have any till food to feed you, but we will find something. It'll be great, and it'll probably be <laughs> I don't Texas typically barbecue. eat much till food. You know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you uh, maybe a plum? No, that anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much for being well, here you. with me. I'm going, I 
I love you so much. And I always end up, you know, just saying, um, you know, you're perfect exactly who and where you are. Love, love, love yourself enough to, to receive the love. And um, I also say, as we close, typically just say, choose joy. Oh, yes. Receive. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Parting is such sweet sorrow. The Charla Anderson Show. Encouraging you to stand strong and courageous with bold faith, no fear, immense hope, kindness, and love, especially towards yourself. Visit CharlaAnderson.com for replays, blogs, and more on her ever-expanding website, as well as watch her live TV show on WinWinWomen.tv, Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. And so that we can continue learning together and growing this community of beautiful souls, we invite you to share The Charla Anderson Show with your circle of friends. Until we meet again next week, remember always, choose joy. Choose joy.